Hey hey guys, Adam514 here and I'm going back to my roots with a rather technical video this time. The topic of this video is a hidden aircraft performance characteristic known as maneuvering energy retention, which is simply the amount of energy conserved when executing a turn. This hidden aircraft performance characteristic may be the reason you like an aircraft even though its performance isn't special on paper. Maneuvering energy retention is a function of many variables, but testing is a superior way to determine the truth and that's what I'll be doing today in this video with the Spitfire LF-9 and the TA-152H. There are two components to the energy of an aircraft, kinetic energy and potential energy, which are speed and altitude respectively. If you know the start altitude and speed and the end altitude and speed, Applying the conservation of energy equation gives the amount of energy lost during the turn, which is what we are looking for. The lower the energy lost, the better the maneuvering energy retention. The starting conditions of this test are 550 km per hour at 100 meters, and each aircraft will do a 360 degree turn. 550 km per hour starting speed was chosen as a high starting point, so that as the aircraft bleeds energy, it reaches medium to low speeds taking it through the most commonly used speeds in War Thunder matches. The Spitfire LF Mark 9 is the first test. As previously stated, the turn will start when the starting conditions of 550 km per and 100 meters are met. I roll a bit before starting the turn to reduce the importance of roll rate in the test. The complete turn ends at the first frame after the aircraft heading passes the letter I of the vehicle. By plugging the end values in the conservation of energy equation, you find that the Spitfire LF Mark 9 loses 6,433 joules per kilogram of energy. That's equivalent to losing 656 meters of altitude. Let's see how the TA-152H compares. The T-152H is the second test, and the testing conditions are identical. Let's see what comes of it. The T-152H loses 2,825 joules per kilogram of energy in a full 360 degree turn, which is equivalent to losing 288 meters of altitude. If the numbers didn't convince you, here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the Spitfire LF Mark 9 and the T-152H. Striking difference, right? Welcome to my maneuvering energy retention spreadsheet. The two aircraft tested in this video are the first two lines of this spreadsheet. After their BR, the test results are entered into the next four columns. The next three columns are interesting but don't play a part in the end result. Then there's turn time, where we see that the Spitfire completes its turn faster. The next two columns are the energy retention results without considering turn time. We see that the Spitfire bleeds more than twice the amount of energy than the T-152H. If you're thinking that it isn't fair since the Spitfire turns faster and hence bleeds more energy, you would be right. That's why the next column is the compensation factor for different turn time. So if the aircraft turns faster than the T-152H, then its compensated energy lost will be reduced thanks to that factor. As we can see in the next column, the Spitfire's energy retention is only 87% worse than the T-152H instead of 128%. The last column is the fair comparison, in my opinion. The link to this spreadsheet is in the description. It's quite difficult to identify aircraft that have good maneuvering energy retention just by looking at them. The characteristics that indicate a good maneuvering energy retention are a high power to rate ratio, for example the J2M, 
high aspect ratio wings, for example the TA152H, low wing loading, for example the A6M, and an elliptical wing shape, for example the Spitfire, though that last one is a big simplification. I'll be steadily testing and adding more aircraft to the spreadsheet. Let me know which aircraft you would like me to test next, and if you have any questions or critiques about this test. Thanks for watching!